God damn it, an entire generation pumping gas, waiting tables, slaves with white collars. Advertising has us chasing cars and clothes, working jobs we hate so we can buy shit we don't need. We're the middle children of history, man. No purpose or place. We have no great war. Our great war is a spiritual war. Our great depression is our lives. We've all been raised on television to believe that one day we'd all be millionaires and movie gods and rock stars, but we won't. We're slowly learning that fact. I'm very, very pissed off. Welcome to Market Makers, everybody. You're home for tomorrow's TA Today. What an amazing last couple of weeks, historical last couple of weeks. We had the attempted assassination on former President Donald Trump. I made a special video for you guys on that. And now we had President Joe Biden drop out of the race, out of that dismal debate performance where he couldn't coherently string two sentences together or answer any questions. What half the country has known for three years, the other half the country found out at that debate, which is basically Joe Biden is not functional, right? He's an elderly gentleman and he cannot function. He cannot lead the country. So leaves a lot of people to wonder who's been leading the country and making these decisions about war, about finances. You know, I guess what, that's one of those questions we'll probably never know the answer to. But politics intertwines very closely with economics. For any of you that are watching Bloomberg or CNBC, you see nice little headlines like yesterday on my Bloomberg app, it popped up on my phone. Futures market rallies now that Joe Biden drops out of the race. <laughs> really? That's why it rallied, right? It has nothing to do with the cycle that we're in. Speaking of which, guys, cycle-wise, I tweeted about this last week, but we made the exact same top. If this all-time high holds from July 16th, the exact same top we did in the GFC cycle July 16th for the all-time high. As you guys know, you've been prepared if you've been watching this channel. The last couple of weeks are the two strongest weeks of the year, going back 100 years in the stock market. You guys knew this for weeks and weeks prior. We've been talking about this cycle of the summer top and drop for months, and yet my YouTube feed was filled with thumbnails like the tone of the market has changed. What scared the markets? What's spooking the markets? Guys, if you get only one thing ever from watching this channel, just understand cycles. And it's really simple to do. It's just most people are lazy or they don't want to learn anything. You can go back the last five years. Well, last five years, every summer, we had a summer top and drop. You can look at the GFC cycle, see how the candles played out, and you can see similarities. It's not going to give you the perfect entry point, but it's giving you turns in the market. And that's what you want to be able to trade. Swings in the trend, unless you're a high-frequency scalper. That's what I like to trade is turns in the market. So we're going to look at the charts, guys. I'm going to get into this. I have... Um, International markets on here as well as cryptos, obviously, because Bitcoin's doing something really interesting. And guess what? The Thursday update will be coming back this week. So you'll also have a Thursday update, a quick market update on the markets. But you know what, Lee, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the charts. All right, guys, before we kick it off, be sure to like this channel and subscribe to the channel because you're not going to get suggested my videos as we are a shadow band channel. If you enjoy this content, you can help support the channel. If you want to trade these markets, you live outside the USA, check out Simple FX, fantastic exchange to trade everything, stocks, commodities, Forex, as well as cryptos, market makers, VIP bonus up to $5,000 instantly, guys, available based on your deposit. It's available instantly. And if you want a crypto exchange with no VPN, no KYC, check out BitUnix. That's in the video description as well. Both of those have the Market Makers VIP. I hope to see you guys on our Discord because I publish additional videos every single week and so does our staff 
fun place to be. Check that out. All the details in the video description. Let's proceed. Looking at the GFC, we're going to do this every video because nobody on YouTube is even talking about this that I've seen. I think this is crazy. I tweeted about this, like I said, last week. We made the all-time high July 16th in the GFC. Then we set up for our summer top and drop, 12.5% drop, okay? And then what did we do? Well, we went sideways. We went up and down. The Fed cut rates September 18th. Now, assuming the Fed does not cut rates here at the end of this month, the next meeting is September 18th, literally the exact same day. And then what did the market do, guys? We rallied and put in our final all-time high before the 57% drop the natural having in the marketplace. That rally, by the way, off that Fed rate cut lasted less than a month. It lasted 23 days. I think we're going to repeat these exact same macro movements. We're setting up for our summer top and drop now. Get the drop. Whether this takes a couple of months to play out, three months it took in 2023, or if it plays out quickly like it did in the GFC cycle, this cycle it played out in 31 days. So it can do either or. Either way, this is what we're looking at is getting that rate cut, final all-time high, and then the bottom drops out the market. If we repeat the GFC cycle, which we are tracking to quite beautifully right now. Let's look at this on the ES. Here's the futures market. Of course, I had our five wave pattern I've been sharing with you guys. This also gives you the harmonic pattern of wave one, wave two, wave three, three waves to a top. So if our all-time high holds, it got put in place July 16th, 57.21 on the E-mini futures. Let's go ahead and zoom in here on the daily time frame so we can look at this, pull this down. So what's the trade? What are we waiting for here? The bounce, waiting for this bounce, all right? So we go to our all-time high at wave five, Pull this down to your corrective low so far. And of course, I want to see this hit at least the 618. Love to see it get to the 786. So you're talking about 5650 to 5683. 5700 would be beautiful. Throw like a, a wick up in that direction, right? Now, remember in 2023, we, we were able to rally until the last part of July, July 27th. You see this? So we rallied till July 27th. So could we do this move again where we put in the high? come back down like we are now, then get that last final spike up and then roll over. Could be guys, that would be a false break pattern on a double top if we do that. But as of right now, this is your all time high, the exact same all time high as the GFC. Want to see this move up, would love to see the 786 get hit. So watch 5650, 5683, up to that 5700 level. See if these resistances hold as we start to move. So look at our indicators. Money flow is still bullish. So to me, that means we could easily do this type of move where we wave back up and fail again. Momentum is starting to flatten out again after it turned bearish. So we'll see how this plays out. Let's look at the NQ. Now, Charles Dow wrote about this, not about the NQ, not about the NASDAQ, but he wrote about the natural halving and doubling in the market in the 1800s, right? Again, understand the history of the market, understand the great traders, the great philosophers of, of the market, and you will understand the market much better than a lot of these new systems that are out there. You got to understand everything that's happened before happens again. The natural doubling in the marketplace. November 2021, Bitcoin makes its all-time high. NASDAQ makes its all-time high. The Russell within 48 hours of Bitcoin makes its all-time high. You have your sell-off all through 2022. Those of you watching the channel back in 21, you knew about the seven-year cycle, the Shemitah cycle. You got your sell-offs. Bitcoin fell 75%. NASDAQ fell 38%. All these assets fell. You put in your bottom in the NASDAQ. And look at this. I put this exactly at 100%. 100% takes you to 20,970. You got to 20,000. What'd you get to here? 20,921 or something. 20,983 with an $83 of an exact doubling on a $21,000 asset. That's crazy. Same exact pattern on your wave count. Three waves to a top. Wave one, wave two. Wave three, you've seen me lay this out with Fibonacci as well. And what are we waiting for here on the daily chart on the NQ? The move back up to challenge this, right? So if we look at our Fib, 
pull it from your all-time high down to that current corrective low. That means 20,475, 20,700. Want to see this move? And you can already see you have a five-wave top right here, right? That could be forming. So if we look at this from this perspective, right? So you have your one, here's your two, here's your three, here's your four, and this would be your five back up here. Let's say it comes to 20,700 right at the 786. Something like that, which as you guys know, is also a what? A head and shoulders pattern. So that could be forming here. You want to watch this. This doesn't have to get to these levels, but this is the levels I'm interested in trading the NQ if it comes back up to this level. Okay. So that's what we're watching right now on the NQ. And as far as where could this go, actually, we need to do that on the S&P as well. But if we look at where this could go, let's go ahead and zoom this out so you can see this. We're going to go to that wave four bottom. Way for bottom up to your current all time high and look at the retracements. So your 618 is at 18,591. The 786 is at 17,941. And obviously, that puts you right back into this cluster of candles, right? So if you lose that 171, then you start looking at the 1272 to the downside, the 1618 to the downside, and you start looking at your previous highs back here in July of 2023. Not expecting that to happen, but just be aware. I think these are all going to retreat to the 618, 786, that type of drop here on the NASDAQ from the current all-time high down to the 786 is about 14.5% to the 618 is at about 11%, 11.3. Remember, the NASDAQ typically retraces more and pumps more than the S&P. Let's do that same thing on the S&P real quick, the target levels, because this is where geometric trading and understanding market history comes into play. We know that the S&P the last five years, the average drop has been 10.5%. Let's just do this with a measurement tool first. If we come down to 10, eh, about 10, 5, 10, 5, 2, right there. Now let's do this with Fibonacci. Look at your up leg, your wave four bottom. That's the April 19th candle from this year up to your wave five current all-time high, look exactly where that takes you, almost to the dollar, 51.25 at the 786. So the two targets would be 618 at 52.50 and the 786 at 51.25. If the S&P does the exact same thing it has done the last five years, your average being a 10.5% drop, summer top and drop. Let's move forward. Let's look at the Dow. The Dow put in a beautiful W pattern, as you guys can clearly see on the three-day chart, right? Get rid of all the noise of the smaller candles. Put in a beautiful W pattern. If we take our midpoint of the W with a FIB, pull it down to that low of the second bottom. Look at your 1618 hit, 41,512. Beautiful hit. Standing above our long-term trend line. I think that's my trend line going back to the GFC, actually. So you're just above it. So what's the Dow doing, guys? We're looking at the same thing. If you're interested in trading these assets, I'm looking at all of these the exact same way. Pulling a FIB from the all-time high pulling it down to that corrective low, and the Dow really has to get a strong bounce back up. 618's at 41.2, 786 is at 41.4, okay? So to complete a three-wave type top, you have to have this motion like this, okay? And that would be the trade up in this range, hold that resistance, would like to see this in confluence with other indicators, would like to see this in confluence with the other indices as well. But right now it's still early, could just be bottoming. Again, we were able to rally until July 27th last summer. So this could be your bottoming process. This may take longer to come back up and then you get your trade, okay? So you gotta be patient on these things. Let's look at the Russell because lots of people were interested in the small caps. You had your peak up here in November, 2021, and then you had your massive sell-off, your long accumulation pattern. You actually put in a new low. You know, this would be your down thrust, your false break to the downside. And then you accumulate it at a higher level, right? You accumulate it at this next level up. You defeat it the 618 after testing it. And where did you get rejected? Exactly at the 786. 2,287. All these charts are based on futures, guys. These are not the cash indices, but you can lay your fibs out the same way, okay? And you'll see these results. So looking at the 786, 2,287, that's what you bounced off of. So what would we be doing on the Russell? Put this on the daily. You can put it on the eight hour, four hour. It doesn't matter. The fib is going to be the same. You see the 786 is strong resistance, 2,287. But I want to take my fib from that fractal all from that fractal high, not the all-time high, but the fractal high of this current uptrend. Look at 618. 2260 and your 786 is right on top of the other 786 within $7 of each other. So 2280. 
right? That's the move looking for the Russell to hold resistance up in that area and then potentially get your trade there. Let's go ahead and move forward. Let's look at Bitcoin because this is the interesting one a lot of people want to see. So Bitcoin, you can see if we pull our FIB from our second top, this is our three-day chart, right? From pull our FIB from our second top down to this corrective low, we hit our first target. The target commenters and the, <laughs> the YouTube comments that would never be hit when we were above, say we'll never drop below 60. We hit our 53K target. That's the higher level target. Remember where I think it's going is mid 40s down here, right? So let's look at this from a geometric perspective because this is what's interesting. So if we look at our downtrend, I've showed you guys this before, downtrend of the first wave, 23.5%. What's that downtrend of the second wave? 26%, okay? Looking at symmetry here, what about this uptrend in between? The uptrend took you 27.5%. What about your current uptrend in the market? 28%, 28 spot 39. Market symmetry. So the 786 at 68,062 is an important level that you guys need to watch because you've done these almost equidistant moves up and down, up and down, right? So that's what I want to watch is that 786 level. And I'm going to zoom in, especially on the Discord and be looking at this in some smaller time frames like the four hour and one hour as well. But we're going to look at this on the daily because what I think you're doing, as we talked about, wave one, wave two, this will be your wave three, wave three to a bottom. Okay. Where would that bottom go? Well, let's just take a fib here from that low. And again, if this is your high, it could come up a little bit more, but if this is your current high, look at what the 1618 says you're going to. 43,975. Sound familiar? Sound familiar to anybody? We've only been talking about it for months on the channel. Months knowing where the markets are going to go eventually, knowing what to look for in the turns, understanding market symmetry of equidistant moves up and down, up and down. Guys, that's my edge in the market. That can be your edge if you find that useful because it can help you find high probability trades for that next big move down, okay? That's what we're watching on Bitcoin. Let's look at this on the daily time frame. We'll look at the indicators. We just almost got overbought on Bitcoin on money flow. Momentum's picking back up. It's starting to peter and roll over as well. So these are the levels that you want to watch because when you look at it on the daily again this is a twenty thousand dollar trading range but you can see you're printing some amazing patterns on bitcoin right now you just have a leg up but what did you do previously here we can look at this for a couple different ways we can look at this using a five wave count because we have a w pattern right so we look at our w just to illustrate the w so you can see it here it's three that's four that's five. Remember, a harmonic cycle is five waves. There's your W. There's your drop, that beautiful drop that you had. And then what else did you have? You had this beautiful double top that formed, right? So you had this beautiful double top off this last impulse up here. Here's your A. Here's your B. There's your low. And there's your C. Double top breakdown. Now you have this disjointed W right here. You have this, this type of W here. If you're false break, move back up to the upside. So again, you just start looking at symmetry. You start looking at patterns on smaller time, frame, time frames. This is going to start to be some type of pattern, right? This is a four hour, maybe on the one hour, but you're going to start to see some type of pattern form. You're like, hey, this might be a good trade. So these are just levels that you guys want to watch. And when you look at it back on the daily, you want to look at it from that 78, uh, that 68K perspective right here from the C point, C point down, C point down 68,000. You can see that's where you're struggling. So watch that 68, 69 K range. Start looking for patterns that you like to trade. Look for the M patterns, look for W patterns, look for any type of pattern that presents itself. And if you see the market start to top, see where Bitcoin is trading. And that's a potential trade for that next move down to the mid forties. Okay. Let's look at Ethereum. I saw an article and I forget the date about the Ethereum ETF starting to trade. I don't remember when it was, but maybe we'll get some type of euphoria with that happening. But as you can see with Ethereum, 4,095, 2,796, big trading range as well. You don't have equidistant moves here between these waves, right? So if you're wave down, wave up, wave down, now you got this little wave up. So I would just watch this in confluence with Bitcoin, but also same exact pattern here. I'm gonna take this FIB from that high, that midpoint high, to that low here, right? Let me get this bigger for you guys. Look where you're struggling right at this 618, 3530. You see that? 3530. 
Maybe we can get some type of rollover pullback here like this. Come back up, come back up, do this, make your W and, and land somewhere in here. You can get a target from in like an eight hour time frame, four hour time frame. It's always nice when things set up a lot cleaner and they do something like this, right? If it does something like this, struggles back again at the 618, gives you a, a double top type pattern to trade, an M pattern to trade. But those are the levels I'd watch. Watch 3530 right now. See if you can continue to hold up in this area and break through it or look for patterns on smaller time frames. Solana, Look at look how key this resistance or the support's been at 127. Look at this. We've had some massive trades shared with you guys and also on the Discord here on Solana. You know, big moves in Solana, right? This is fun to trade. So when you look at the M pattern here, big move down. And now what you have here is you have this type of W, if you zoomed out and looked at this in like a three-day chart, right? You have this type of W pattern forming. So you want to look at this from a couple perspectives. I want to look at this from that 210 high down to that low. You got above the 618 at 173. The 786 is at 189. You can see you almost got it here as well. So you want to watch that high 180s, mid 180s level on Solana. And of course, if you zoom into smaller time frames, you'll get different patterns. But that's the first area that you want to watch. And if we look at this from this W, smaller W perspective right here, for those of you that don't see what I'm looking at, looking at this W right here, okay? The 200% move is right up there at 189. So again, the high 180. So just watching that local high, right? That local high puts you right back in the heart of these candles. So watch that 189 level. You're at 182. So watch the 189, just above it in the 190s. If you break this midpoint up here at 188 and you break out, then you want to start looking at your higher level targets and look at your previous fractal highs right up there at that 200 range, right? The 200, the 210. So you're just going to look at this in levels and look at this in confluence with what the other markets are doing. Are they breaking out? Is it an idiosyncratic case only for Solana and everything else is selling off? Those are things you want to consider. Money flow, you didn't get overbought, but you are uh, you got very close to it. You're flattened out there in bullish territory. Momentum looks good on the daily. Let's see what else we got. Let's look at gold. Gold long-term accumulation chart, breakout from this chart. This is a three, almost a four-year chart here, August 2020. You got your breakout. You got your series of higher lows. You guys know we talk about gold all the time, especially on the Discord as well. And now you have this new accumulation slash distribution range that you try to break out of. You need to get above 2431 and hold above 2431. Okay, that's what you got to do. And if you can do this, you just did this move, pull back, and again, put in your W, continue with this higher low process, you could break out. But the breakout is above that 2431 and staying above it, not just getting a false break and selling back off. So you're trying to climb this ladder in gold right now. And what do we got in gold? Money flow is creeping into the bullish territory. Momentum, eh, it's struggling between bullish and bearish. You had this nice move back up. We'll see if this holds up. And again, this is a three-day chart. Let's look at this on a daily. On a daily chart, if this was going to break down, you guys know how I would look at it. If you had a bearish view on gold selling off with the markets, I would take it from the all-time high, the FIB, pull it down to that corrective low, and then I'd be looking at 24.45, 24.62 for your patented M pattern to come up, struggle at one of those levels, and that's your trade, okay? That's your trade. So that's what you want to look at. Let's look at some international markets. The Australian market, because we've been talking about it the last couple of videos now, had this beautiful triangle form, right? And then you broke out from the triangle and you broke to the upside. And now what are you doing? You're bouncing back up. I mean, you know, that's just like all the markets. Remember that, you know, most of the markets, well, half the US market is traded by algorithms. So this money flows into all these markets, but this is your M pattern that you're forming. Now, could it break through the M pattern? Sure. You have to take out that fractal high. If you're super bullish on the Australian market, then you got to take this out. You got to take out 8,068 here in the Australian futures. If you do not, then what's going to happen, guys? You pull your fib from that high down to that corrective low. And most likely you're going to stall out between 7,990 and 8,024 if this ends up selling off with the US market. So you want to watch that move because there's your trade right in the kill box, right? People call it the golden pocket. I call it the kill box. Watch that area 
for the Australian market. Let's look at the DAX. DAX getting its rebound too. DAX has been trading in this channel. Same levels are the most of concern for the DAX to be bullish. You got to get above 18,615. And the level that I like, the 786 at 18,793, because you struggled here. As you can see, you got above it, sold back off. But you know, again, this is following this channel quite nicely and you didn't come down and retest the channel. You got a higher low. So could this come up? and be a little bit more surprising, it could. Again, I'm going to do this in confluence with the U.S. markets. If the U.S. markets just keep grinding up a half percent, trying to recover what they lost, you could see the DAX move up disproportionately. Remember, even though the markets are connected, they also have their own story. So you want to watch these levels, see if you can clear these levels, break these levels. If not, once again, they present trades. DAX is still in the bearish territory and money flow momentum is just now starting to turn up. 18, 793, 18, 615. Those are the two levels you got to crack to get more upside. And if you look at the market there in the UK with Lee, then you're looking at the uh, you're looking at the FTSE, and this is I mean look at this this is just trading beautifully. You got your trend line from your high, just all the candles are failing, and it got rejected today just on the trend line. So this is spooling as you can see, right? What's the bias here? Well, again, it depends what this does, how quickly it wants to break out or break down. If the U.S. markets top out in the next couple of days and start rolling, I think you're going to see the uh, FTSE also roll. But if they continue to go up for a couple of days, maybe you can get this spooling and come up to the upside. Let's look at, let's see what our, uh, we're doing here in the Caterpillar. Let me look at this. You're starting to contract. Remember when you contract, when you constrict is when you get your moves. So you're contracted here, you're constricted, you're stacking candles side by side. The bias would be, it needs to break out up or down, but to go up to the upside, you got to get past the 618 at 8346. Current price is 8216. So we'll see which way this thing spools and breaks out. But this is a good one to watch because there's a move coming in, right? There's a move to either challenge this high and give you some type of double top structure, or let me go ahead and move this off. Challenge this high, give you a double top structure, or you just start breaking down and then you're going to be coming down to the 8,000 range, right? So those are the two levels you want to watch. See which way this breaks out. See which way you break. Can you break the trend line to the upside or are you going to break down to the downside? Because it's going to be a nice move, I think, once it plays out. Guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Once again, be sure to like and subscribe. I answer your comments as always on YouTube and uh, hope to see you in the Discord. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Take care, everybody.